Hey guys, welcome back to the episode of East Coast Bass Fishing. Today's video topic is going to be about bladed jigs, uh, chatterbaits. Um, we're talking about the jackhammers. We're talking about any brand of bladed jig that you prefer. Uh, I'm going to go over the ones that I use. We're going to talk about trails. We're going to talk about lines, reels, rods. We're going to go over everything um, and just get right into it and just kind of go over what trailers and stuff I like to use, how I like to fish them, or certain areas, certain locations, and, and how I like to fish them. Because believe it or not, guys, there are a lot of people out there that just haven't caught anything on bladed jigs or jackhammers or chatterbaits or real no uh, Z-Man chatterbaits or any brand, so to speak. So, and it, most of the time it's a mental thing. It's, it's, a, it's a confidence thing. And for a long time, myself, I didn't fish them at all. Just didn't believe in them. I had no luck until I tried them out. So, guys, we're going to get right into it and talk about bloody jigs. All right, guys. First off, I want to say, start off right now, I'm no way, uh, any way, shape, form, or fashion affiliated with this company, Z-Man. This is just uh, something I believe in, something I fish heavily, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people all over the country do as well. Um, and for this summer, this actual, actually, since the beginning of the year, the Z-Man products have been a game changer for me. It's been on fire since the winter time, spring, summer, and I'm sure in the fall they're going to still be eating it. So right now what I've been using is the Z-Man jackhammer, guys. This particular one and, and also this one here. These are 3 8 ounce jackhammers and this is the green pumpkin shad I actually have one on the pack here three eighths ounce green pumpkin shad as you can see and we're going to go over the trail in a little bit and how i like to rig them up and when i like to use certain trails and things of that nature that's the green pumpkin shad this one here is the bite the light that's been a game changer as well and it's just kind of it imitates and, and mimics certain bait fish and this one here will mimic certain kind of shads and things of that nature. This one here, it'll also mimic some shads. Then again, at the same time, it'll mimic those bluegills. You got a little chartreuse in there. You got a little green pumpkin. I actually take it out the pack for you guys so you can actually see it. And then we're going to talk about the actual weight sizes. Half ounce, three eighths ounce. And they got some small ones. Or so I haven't played around and messed with them as of yet, but... I learned that these here in a 3 8 ounce I actually do the trick for me. For a long time, I was throwing a half ounce, which is which is good. I was just mainly throwing it because I wanted to get a long distance casting. And you can still get a long distance cast with the 3 8 ounce. It just depending on your rod and the line. So, since we got that down, guys, we're going to go here, jump right into talking about trailers. What type of trailers do you use? when do you use certain type of trailers? Some trailers, you got a lot of pinages that give off a lot of a lot of action. And what these jackhammers, this is an instant, as soon as they hit the water and you start to retrieve, this blade is gonna kick and you're gonna feel that thump. That vibration is an instant. Unlike some other brands, not saying they're not good, but in my opinion, there's just no comparison to the Z-Man brand. Well, the jackhammer, I should say. <clears throat> so, trailers. These trailers here have been a go-to for me uh, for a little while now. And I want to say these raised tail menace. These are raised tail uh, menace in the four inch, guys. This is the, what is it called? This is just a pearl white. I like to use this. It kind of imitates certain type of bait fish, uh, any kind of shadow. It just depends on, for me, the water clarity a lot of times and what kind of bait fish if I already know what kind are in there. And when I rig it, as you can see, I rig it sideways. As you can see, there's the hook point. Let me turn it upside down so you can guys can see it. I rig it like that, so it kind of gives that kicking action this way. And then you can also rig it the other way, but for me, I think it just looks more lifelike, more realistic when you got these appendages like this. So you don't see fish swimming around with their, their fins kicking off in the opposite direction. So we got the the pearl white, we also have a bluegill color here, which is also money. A lot of places around the country have a lot of bluegill. Me, I will pair that up with this one as well. 
it just goes perfectly. And that's what I've been using for a lot, uh, a lot lately, a lot of different locations and places. So, and to kind of give them something subtle, something a little bit um, less vibration, because you already know the blade's gonna give off a ton of vibration, a ton of action, and that skirt's gonna do all the work to kind of get them honed in. They're gonna feel that vibration in the lateral lines and they're gonna hone in on it. So one thing I have learned as of lately, and I kind of hate to let this cat out the bag, but a, a good friend of mine from Becon Pro Staff, he showed me this, these soft plastic lures, and they absolutely just killed it. We were fishing on a lake, and I just couldn't get a bite. They just weren't biting my jackhammer. And of course, we had the same jackhammer on, just different trailers. He had a different color. He had mother, he had actually this color here, the light bite, the, the light bite. He had that one on. But he didn't have the same trailer. I had a black and blue with these here, the bluegill. Now, it's the first time my fish, my first time fishing this lake, he was throwing this guy right here. Your hog farmers spunk shad swim bait. These guys. And as you can tell, it's totally different. Totally different from the Rage Menace. You got this little slender tail here, and guys, this thing gives off a ton of action, but it doesn't give off the same type of action as the Rage Menace does. I'm gonna rig one of these up just right now and show you guys how it looks. And you can bite a little bit off the head if you want, and just put it on there, or like, like myself, you can just use the whole thing. You know, with these little keepers on both sides here, it's definitely not gonna come off. And there you have it, guys. That's what it looks like. This little thing in the back, this trailer, this hog former, is something new to me. I've been using it and they have absolutely been just demolishing it because it's something different, something they haven't seen. But then again, at the same time, it almost mimics some of the smaller bait fish in a lot of these lakes and rivers and, and reservoirs and stuff like that. These are the two main sources of trailers I like to use. Not saying it's the only colors I use. I do use green pumpkin, excuse me. But as you can see, my green pumpkin is totally empty. Gone. Picked up a new set here. This is the Hard Farmer Spunk Shad. This is the Tennessee Magic. That's the Tennessee Magic, and this is the Crystal Shad. So, any of the lakes that have shad, use something that kind of imitates the shad uh, as far as color, because that's going to be the main force 90%, maybe 99, 100% of the time. That's going to be the main force. So we got that down. We got the, the jackhammers. We got the three eighths ounces, what I like to use. This is my personal preference. You can go half ounce if you like. Um, they do work. I've caught tons. I caught my personal best on a um, Z-Man Chatterbait. I forget the name of it, but either way, it was a 7.7. .7. Caught it on a Chatterbait. And now we're going to go jump right into it. We're going to go over the line and the rods. Very, very important, guys. All right, guys. So. We got the baits out the way. We're going to talk about the line and the rods right now. The reels, a little bit secondary in my opinion, because you can kind of control the speed of the retrieve. So the line and the rod, the rod that I was using earlier on this year, don't get me wrong, it was working, but I did lose some fish because why? My rod was too stiff. I was using this here. Enigma HPT, seven foot three, medium heavy. Medium heavy is, is definitely a good thing to use medium heavy. It's a fast action, but this particular rod, for some reason, it's a lot stiffer than some of the other Enigma rods that I have. So seven foot three, medium heavy, and I have 15 pounds Sunline FC Assassin on here, which is fine. 15 is, is, is a great medium, happy medium as far as line. I didn't lose many fish. I did lose some, but I did. I know that with that blade, you don't have to set the hook. You don't have to drive it home. But me personally, I'm one of those guys. When I get a bite, and I know I got a beefy side of hook uh, to deal with. I'm gonna set the hook pretty hard to make sure I land that fish. But at the same time, if that that rod tip doesn't load up like it needs to, on some of the bigger fish, they can shake it. I've actually lost a few big ones, 
because of that. So on to the next rod, which I've been using. And it, I bought it for mainly my cranking rod, but I did land a nice four pounder not too long ago on my Enigma E-Glass uh, cranking rod. This is actually a cranking rod. And it's, it's part fiberglass um, and part, I forget what it is. Either way, it's a cranking rod and it's a medium. Medium heavy, I'm sorry. Seven foot medium heavy. And it's got more bend to it. It's, it's got more tip than my other HPT does. So that being said, you might hear a lot of different people use different things. It's just a personal preference in, in, in my opinion. You know, you can use whatever you like, but you want to use something that's comfortable. You want to make sure you don't lose fish. I haven't lost any on that glass rod, but I also been using another one, which is something new as well. This is my Phenom. And this one is also a seven foot, this is a seven five, I believe, seven five. And it's got a faster tip, it's a lighter rod. And all of these rods have 15 pound Sunline FC Assassin. My line choice for my moving baits, uh, jackhammer, spinner baits, things of that nature is gonna be that 15 pound. Maybe 14, I'll go 14, but probably no less than that, to be honest. So 15 pound fluorocarbon, um, a seven, let's say seven three to seven five to be on the safe side for your distances. Um, medium heavy glass rod, or it's, make sure it has a fast tip. That's a must, you have to have that fast tip. All right guys, now we got that covered. Let's talk about the reels itself. I've been playing around with different reels. I've tried it on my Shimano Corrado. Um, K, I've tried it on my Serrano DC, the uh, SLX DC, and I've been using it actually, it's been doing pretty well on my just regular Shimano Caius. It works well on my Caius, it's a slow gear ratio, but for me at the same time, these handles are not big, they're not bulky enough. So your hand can kind of slip off, especially if you're using moving baits. So I do prefer to have a reel that has bigger, bulkier handles like the K here and like the DC SLX. It's a preference. Again, it's all about preference, all about what's comfortable for you. But the object of this video is to teach you some of the things I do, how I like to fish jackhammers. Of course, that's all I'm fishing like as of right now. I just don't see myself using anything else because it just stands out far beyond everything else. But guys, we're gonna jump right into a couple of clips here. And uh, I might even get out on the water and throw it around and kind of go over some things I like to do. jackhammer here black and blue with a raised tail menace trailer and that is the in a bluegill pattern got on a 16 pound sunline fc sniper you know, that current is moving just like i need to be just need a giant to come and smash this jackhammer right now
go. Once again, Jack Herman gets it done. Solid fish there. Thanks. Where'd you just catch that big boy on? Uh, jackhammer. That thing is a beast. Yeah, pretty decent one. He's a big one. I'm about to put it on scales. He's probably about four pounds. Yeah. It's a good looking fish. Thanks. Three nine five. Almost four. Yep. Right. It's a good fish. Yeah, good fish. That concludes the evening, the uh, upload. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something about fishing bladed jigs, chatterbaits, uh, bladed jigs. They go hand in hand. Same thing. People call them different things, but guys, go pick up that Z-Man jackhammer in the three-inch ounce. You will not be disappointed. I hope these tips show you a couple of things. I hope you learned something. If you do, please drop some comments. Uh, message me. And also go check out my Instagram. I do a lot of, uh, you know, IGT videos and stuff there. I hope you guys enjoy. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.